My name is Angie Savala, and I am an electrical engineering student at the University of Notre Dame. For the past 10 weeks, I've been part of the Leonard research team at the Hunt Utilities Group in Pine River, Minnesota. The first half of the summer was spent reading up on the field. Traditionally, Leonard research is done using electrolytic cells, treated wires, or nanopowders. However, Professor Carmenteri used rock samples and a hydraulic press. So, the experiment. Simply stated, it is applying force to a sample of rock until failure while monitoring the surroundings for neutrons. Carpentary suggests that during tectonic activity, such as an earthquake, iron atoms undergo fission and become aluminum atoms while releasing neutrons. To monitor this experiment, we purchased two BTI bubble detectors. These detectors contain freon saturated in a gel. For every few million neutrons that pass through the gel, a bubble is formed. These bubbles are clearly visible without additional aids. The major difference between Carpentary's original experiment and our replication is the size of the press. Carpentary used a 100 ton hydraulic press, whereas our press will only go up to 50 tons. Therefore, we are limited in the size of the specimen that we will be able to crush. In his experiment, Carpentary used samples of granite and marble. His samples were in the form of cylinders and rectangular prisms. Our samples are from the local quarry, and therefore we had to shape them up with our own diamond saw. They're a little less regular than the ones that Carpentary used. We also have a variety of different colors of granite, which crush differently because of their densities. So, experiment setup. For the press, we had two steel plates made. These would protect both the load cell and the press during crushing. Around these plates, we placed a plastic mesh. This mesh served two purposes. One, it prevented any rock shards from escaping during the crushing. And two, it allowed the detectors to have a stable surface to attach to. After the bubble detectors finally arrived on our campus, we had the chance to test them for shock bubbles. Shock bubbles were our biggest concern with running this experiment. We wanted to see what a shock bubble would look like. So our way to do this was to take the detectors and hold them against a steel table while hitting the table with a mallet. We did this a few times and saw no shock bubbles. So we went about our business and started the experiment. To begin, we crushed a handful of rocks from the area. This was just to get acquainted with the press and. The for safety, we had the plastic mesh around the rock that prevented any shards from escaping. And then we also had a plexiglass shield held up against the press. Originally, I only wore gloves and safety glasses. However, it was very apparent after a couple crushings that the rock dust and the noise were going to be a problem. So after the rock was crushed, I put on a face mask while handling the rock. And then I also wore earplugs because those shocks are pretty loud. After we had crushed our local rock, we moved on to the granite samples. The first sample of granite, we saw something. At the end of the detector, technically out of range for counting, we noticed a cluster of bubbles. Neutron bubbles should appear randomly. They are also consistent in size, whereas bubbles produced from shock will form in clusters. Once we went back over the footage, we could see that the bubble detector had hit the edge of the plate, most likely causing a shock cluster. The second piece of granite crushed at about 70,000 pounds. One of the detectors dislodged from the mesh and hit the steel plate that the load cell was sitting on. This caused the detector to break. Inside this detector, hundreds of bubbles formed. We're not sure if any of those are from neutrons because any of the pollution from the shock bubbles made it very difficult to tell what the proper size was. The surviving detector was wrapped in a foam tube for the remainder of the test. To summarize our results, out of the 13 pieces of granite that we crushed, in two instances we saw bubbles. The remaining 11 showed no signs of change in the bubble detectors. The two instances where we saw bubbles were also the only tests that to reach almost 70,000 pounds of force. These bubbles would be excellent candidates for shock clusters. 
Although our results are different from that of Carpentieri, we must also acknowledge the differences in our experiment. For one, the size of our press limited the size of samples that we were able to crush. And for another, we only had two detectors at most, while Carpentieri said he used multiple surrounding the sample. Hopefully after further experimentation, someone will be able to confirm or reject Carpentieri's results. We may not have seen neutrons, but that's not to say they aren't there. I'd like to thank the Minnesota High Tech Association and their SciTech Experience Program, as well as the Hunt Utilities Group for hosting me this summer. It's been a wonderful experience, and I've really enjoyed being a part of the HUG community.